Well, I actually came to a game 18 months ago. Um, you know, as I said earlier, we've, we've been on pre plenty of vacations over here to visit my son, um, and we got acquaintances, myself and Zoran, who knew each other, and I got I got invited to the game against Red Bull, and really enjoyed the game. Uh, it, uh, Charlotte were winners on the day 2 0, and it was a great atmosphere. You know, you could tell it was a, a community driven club, you know, um, with the supporters. And I think that, that warmth and that feel never left me. Um, so, to answer your question, uh, when the, the role came up, I was uh, approached to see if I would be interested in the role, and I then done my due diligence and just spoke to my family as I always do, and uh, we felt that this could be a really good opportunity. Who's a badass? She's a badass. Who's a badass? She's a badass. Hey Dino, what's up man? Welcome to Charlotte, dude. Uh, man, we love you. Can't wait to see what you do on the pitch. Um, hopefully it won't be what Villa did to my Spurs, but you know, that's a whole nother story. But welcome to Charlotte. Man, we'll get some tea, maybe some crumpets, man. Do an old English breakfast or something, man. Just hit us up. Love an interview. Blood sausage. Derek Johnson, if you're seeing this, Derek Johnson, I love you, man. I love you. Right? You're the only midfielder I love. Yo! Get off Capetti's nuts back! I told you! Get off his nuts! Capetti is a baller insect. Just saying. That big apple was a golden delicious, baby. Let's go! Atlanta, we go over there. We killing you. That's, that's kind of uh, a... Anyways, we'll skip right over that. Anyways, delete that out of the video, please. My mom would be so disappointed. TJ, I'm going to have to hire you for photography. And ain't no TJ, it's JT. JT. <laughs> <laughs> you changed the name, man. Come on. It's fine, it's fine. Good room. AK, where all the cleats are. You smell, the, the airflow in here is really good. It smells really good. If they want to stretch their stuff out, get their workout on them, bam. Um, we love Christian, Kalina. I don't know. What can March do better? Uh, is absolutely top notch. We're top so notch. proud of him. We love him in Germany. Yeah, he did a great job. So like when you go on Kalina's website, you give him like a five star Yelp review. Absolutely. 100% every time. Damn, I ain't got no interview or nothing. Anyway, over here at Queen City. <laughs> CLTST fans, by the fans, by the fans, damn it. Hey, hey, George, 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 George. I got it, I got it. Is it CLTFC Fan TV for the fans, by the fans, damn it. For the fans, by the fans, damn it. Damn. And at the same time, we got that win, baby. 
We did, man. We got those three points, man. We got hey, those three everybody. Points. Welcome to CLTFC Fan Team. Mm -hmm. Hey, if you saw that uh, in the beginning clip, I was supposed to take the old thing out about Derek Jones with the kids talking about how much they love him, but I kept it in there on purpose because for purpose. this last game, we're rebels. Oh, hold on, hold on. Where it is? For this last game, we love Derrick Jones. We love Derrick Jones. You are my That's favorite right. midfielder, Derrick Jones. Yeah, man. He uh, He's a Charlotte player, man. He's a Charlotte player. Yeah. Super and secret double agent. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, who's that? It's Matt Mint City Chantry, a.k.a. Ashley T. T. Bag. No, it means T gang. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hey, look at Hat Brigade. That's it. I, I wasn't Happy sure if you were done. I thought there was more to it. I thought you were going to yeah, add yeah, a yeah. few more superlatives. I'll just yeah. say something else. Well, here's the thing. You have the Bucket Hat Brigade, and the OG Bucket Hat person is right over there. Lee, put that bucket hat on. Let Get it closer to the camera. Let us see. They can see it, right? I mean, they see it at the games, man. But it's an OG bucket hat. It's a good look. And, and from y'all are both English, born and raised for the most part. For the most Our part. Bu bucket hats were popular. You, you saw your dad's wearing bucket hats at the beach back in the, the 80s or something. I mean, your dad took you to the beach? I don't know. Did he take you to the beach? No, I've never been to the beach. You had a dad? <laughs> well, he went to go see a man about a dog and never came back. Uh, all right. Anyway, let's get to it. All right, man. So, uh-oh, did my batteries die on my keyboard? Nope. Cool. All right. So before we get going, though, there was something that happened on the um, outside the stadium, and we happened to catch it on video. And I just want to get Matt's... Uh, Thoughts on this. Better than Fulham. Okay. All right, ready? One, two, three. Tottenham is better than Fulham. Uh, he's going to hate me for that. So, uh, yeah, Matt, what do you think about that, man? Um, I run into this, you know, wee lad, and he was telling me Tottenham's better than Fulham. I uh, I set him to bed early tonight, just but just based on that alone. <laughs> With no dinner, right? <laughs> yeah. Not No food for a week. Oh, no, man. no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Feed him tomorrow. <laughs> that was a Just joke. Tonight. No, report me, please. Just yeah. Tonight. That's funny. But no, I mean, this game, though, man, this game was unreal. I'm telling you, man, it was like 44 minutes, man. It, it was about 44 minutes. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to run out early and go hit the bathroom and get back in time for the second half. Because normally I end up getting stuck out there and miss the first part of the second half. And I came back and it was like, I don't know, 58 minutes. And I was like, God damn it, man, I missed 13 minutes of the second half. And then somebody reminded me, it was like, no, we haven't switched sides yet. This is still the first half. And I was like, it's insane, best, man. The best, is, the best is that he truly believed that and he accepted it in his brain that he yeah. had like a 15-minute a gap. He was like, oh, shit, man. Did I yeah. really just lose 15 <laughs> minutes? I didn't talk to you on it at halftime. And now it's the second half. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was some kind of a Charlotte FC promo, like like – Come to one game and get like twenty percent extra game free or something. Yeah, it was it was crazy. But you know, um, <laughs> Dino um, had some thoughts on that too, man. So let's listen. We'll see what Dino said. I mean, some new things for me. In over a thousand games in football, I've never done sixty-two minutes in the first half. That's crazy. Um, you know, so there's some real new things. We. We played against a very good team who got re restricted to 10 men. I've not seen the challenge back, so I don't know about it, but I thought we pressed well, we caused some problems, but they were always a threat on the transition. Um, but we've missed some massive chances today in the first half too. But perseverance and, and patience and trying to do the right things managed to get us the, the win in the end. Did it change the halftime dock for you, it, you know, the emotional and physical strain? Or is it still just kind of business as usual? No, it's pretty much business. Um, you know, we, we've got two coaches up in the stand watching the game, so I wanted to know what they'd seen and forget about when it was 11v11 because it's not 11v11 anymore. 
you know, what have you seen in, since it's 11 v 10 um, and break that down and then go and give some simple instructions to players. Ask them what they're seeing and feeling on the pitch first. It's always get always good to get their feedback and then right. This is our plan for the second half now. And now it's changed a little bit because they've got a, a man down. But you don't even reference the the chances we've had because you know as I say, it, it's it's always what you do next. Man, there's so much to pick apart there, right? Obviously, Dino said over a thousand or so games that he's managed, he hasn't seen it ever. The first half goes 62 minutes, right? And then, like Casey said, man, it was like a 110-minute-plus game without overtime. It was insane, man. It was like well, I've let, never seen anything like it before. Let's just say, before you jump in, uh, Matt, is that it was so much over, but I think it had a lot to do with the referees who aren't quite professionals. And not to bury the lead, but earlier today – the MLS, more professional, better professional. Our refs are back, which I think is a big deal. I want to give a little love to whatever made the deal happen. I don't know exactly what happened, but I'm glad they're coming back. At least when we can complain, we'll complain about them uh, doing a bad job, although they're doing a good job. And 60 minutes, that's insane. Yeah, I mean, Christian saying uh, MLS wrap up on Apple TV he said it was the longest first half in MLS history. I would like to say it was probably the longest half ever. Other we than we got a record, we got a record. You know, when there's been a serious injury or something, you know. Yeah, so, that was but what yeah, I was gonna say I can only remember there was a there was a, a reference for them because that's my always my only reference. But um, there was a game last season, I believe, um, and there was uh, a serious injury. I can't remember if it was first or second half. A serious injury for. The other team's player, and um, there ended up being like twenty minutes um, first half. In, I think it was first half uh, injury time because of that. However, that was a bit different because for the vast majority of that twenty minutes, no one was actually playing football. They were, they were. What, the guy was getting help and everything else. Um, this was completely different because it was stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start the whole first half. So they were, they were moving the whole time physically. It was, it, I'm sure, exhausting for them. I've never seen nothing like it in my life. And I hate that it's taken away from the game, but I'm glad to hear today that MLS finally figured something out with the refs, you know, so now we can bitch about the Ted uncles and that kind of stuff. But, Did they say anything about it, Lee? Cause you're always on top of it on the socials and everything. Did anyone like on Monday talk about like Bogart or whoever about how long it was the longest ever? Or did you have to research? I didn't really what talk about how long it was. I mean, there was so much controversial refereeing this weekend. I mean, that game for sure. I think the St. Louis fans were bitching about the refs there too. Um, but, you know, it's, it, it, you know, like, you know, the fans on Twitter, at least from Columbus, were really upset, right? That, you know, they were like, we don't deserve the three points. We can't believe we're not like bashing on the refs. We're well aware that the refs are shit or were, you know, the, the, the scab refs, right, were shit. I mean, there was no uh, doubt they, in their mind. They, as someone wrote earlier, and let's be fair, they were professionals, most of them from what I understand, but just on lower levels. Well, yeah, what's the phrase like we like, say, don't, go ahead, Matt. Don't, uh, don't blame, uh, don't assume like conspiracy when it's just like incompetence sometimes. Like yeah. <laughs> there's no conspiracy. The, the ref was just bad. Well, like, what I would say that is all humans, be they referees or players or fans, have conspiracy and incompetence in them at any given moment. But again, this is fan TV, so we're coming from a fan TV perspective, and I would oh, just like to say those refs were shit, and yes, I'm oh, really yeah. glad that the other oh, refs are showing up. Yes, so take that. So, uh Yeah. But I mean, overall, I mean, God, there's so much to talk about. Most of it's that first 62 minutes, right? I mean, there was that disallowed goal that Breck should have put in, right? Uh, there was the penalty. Um, shit, what else was there? The red card. Um, injuries. Three injuries. From them and yeah. One from us went off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just uh, the, uh, three, the three kickoff attempts at the start. Yeah, the, the, the three kickoff attempts. Like, we should have just known right there, right? And no, because when I pulled into Charlotte, right, when I came in and I was parking, I was like, something just feels weird today. Like, I don't know if it was just the atmosphere felt flat or if it was like the NCAA was in town or, or what. And it was just – was that? It was the it 23rd. Was terrible. 23rd. Huh? It was the 23rd. 
and it was almost a full moon, I think. Was it? But it yeah, was man, because they flash you up on the screen once, and everyone was like, "That's a bit weird." What's that? Yeah, there was, was a bit spooky. Spooky. It's spring. Yeah, it was just it was just a weird night, man. <laughs> a weird night with three points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A weird night with three points. That's what I'm mean. like. That's it, right. man. It yes, yes. But uh man, yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. I've just never seen anything like it. But yeah, so I mean, what do you think, right? That people were saying like we should have got a red card too, because of Jones's tackle was kind of soft. Um, you know, I don't know. I mean it's hard to tell, right? I mean, especially when they slow it down, it can look worse than what it really is. But at the same time, I mean, it was above the ankle. That could do some serious damage. Yeah. The the Jones one is one of those ones that I've seen given and I've seen not given as well. Like, it's, I feel like a little bit of a judgment call. Um, uh, I, it, I, I I don't blame him for, for red carding him. And I also wouldn't have been super angry if he didn't. Um, and at the same time, I think there was Arfield did a uh, did a pretty bad similar kind of tackle on uh, one of their players as well, and equally probably could have got sent off. Prob- might not have been able to be sent off as as well. And again, was a bit of a judgment call. So you could argue from a Columbus point of view, they were on the the, the bad end of two judgment both those judgment calls there for sure. Um, yeah. but they, they weren't. They weren't insane. I've se- I've seen on both of them. I've seen lot plenty crazy decisions in those. Yeah, I mean, Greg's saying that he stumped on his foot and elbowed him in the face. So take your pick, you're right. But I didn't see. The I don't know. Face. Yeah, I mean, it, him, but yeah, I, I mean, like Jones has been reckless, but I mean, unintentional or not, right? I mean, that it's well, still it so yeah, fast. It so fast. Matter, in my opinion. No, I don't think so either. If it's, if it's dangerous and clumsy, it's dangerous and clumsy. Well, yeah. Yes. But is is clumsy intentional or not? And it happens so fast. But yeah, if you look at if you look at the replay, not I didn't see it either. The push off, but his cleats came into the ankle, and almost the high ankle, you know. And that's like that can mess you up for a long time. He was going for the ball. Yeah. He missed the ball by maybe like yeah. I know that's what I'm saying. He missed the ball, was, and, yeah. and that ankle happened to be there, and that's what happened. And by the rules, he should have been taken out. And like like uh, the young gentleman said in the intro, Derek Jones, I love you. you yeah, are my yeah. I mean, Greg, I, we, I think we all agree, right? There isn't. It doesn't have to be intent for red card for sure. I just, uh, I just think it's funny, man. And then today they announced that Jones basically got fined, right, for uh, <laughs> taking too long to get off the field. So you know, it's like, uh, you know. I hope maybe Tepper will pick up that bill for you, Derek, you know, so, but you know, then, then it was the missed penalty at the end. Oh my God. Right. And you know, it, and yeah, we touched on that, right. The three false how we, starts. How do we get out of this, this, I don't want to call it a Kurt. I'm knocking on wood. How do we get out of this missing penalties? I mean, they keep moving to different people and we have that cut from uh, Dino talking yeah. about who decides what, but it's like, what is going on? It was uh, what Tavarish. That's the big problem in my mind. What you said there in the middle is it's been different people, and also it's been inexperienced. But both penalties this season that we've missed have been inexperienced <clears throat> players taking them. And me personally, when when you press a situation like that, I always lean towards the more experienced player taking the penalty. Um, yeah. So Dino, we got a clip on Dino talking specifically about the yes. penalty. So we'll listen to see what he has to say. You know, hindsight's twenty twenty, but do you think you had the right guy taking it? Yeah, he's been taking really good penalties, you know, uh, during the week in training, and he was confident enough to take it. It happens. I always say it's what you do next. Um, you know, some of the best players in the world have missed penalties uh, in big tournaments as well, like World Cups. So it's always what you do next. The players will practice penalties during the week, um, and it's pretty much, you know, who we feel at the time he's, he's the best person to take it you know Yuri's have been in really good form um his technique has been really good in training so we just felt it was it was right for him to take it yeah i mean there's that right i mean i would have let westy take it but apparently he was on form and looking good in practice um I don't uh, so I got a bit of PTSD with penalties being English, obviously. Yeah, I feel you there. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like I've heard that before from England managers in the past where they say, oh, 
yeah, they were practicing them really well in, in the week. So we, we chose them. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you can't recreate the pressure of a penalty um, in practice. It's impossible. No, um, it's definitely impossible. I, I, it's, it's, it, it's impossible. That, that doesn't mean <clears throat> that more experienced players wouldn't necessarily miss either. I'm just apples to apples. I would go for the, the experienced player I trust. I can't even right now. So what so, I'm trying to tell you is, so who, 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 all right. So when Petty was the DP, he's on the field. He has the decision to do it or not. And then he lets Vargas, whatever. And then he's off now. And so they're just doing like a by committee when they're on practice. I mean, Dino, baby, Dino, baby, just tell somebody to do it. And they got to know who the, the best of the best, whoever it is. The most experienced, the coolest, the calmest. But to have three now, I believe it's three. Yeah, three that we've missed. Well, it was funny because I'm standing there. I'm talking to to my buddy, Will. I'm standing there, and I'm like, Will, this is what's going to happen, man. He's going to step up. He's going to take this penalty. He's going to kick it, like, up to the second tier behind us. Or if not, it's going to hit me right in the face and break my nose. One of the two. Right, and I'd be damned if he didn't do that, man. Except for I picked close. the wrong side he was going, man. He was trying so, to hang out with Top Ben and couldn't do it. Yeah, man. So it was, it was, uh, <laughs> it was shit. Yeah. Anyways, I would let Westwood take it, or you know, I don't know if I don't Capetzi know if he's playing. Yeah, Capetzi for sure. Know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. trying to run that, but that's the word. I would let them take it. No, someone needs to tell them to take it. Yeah, I mean, West. Yeah, I'm saying something. Yeah, yeah. Well, and also, you, the other thing about penalties as well is, you, you, if you choose someone and you're going to get them to take it all the time, don't get scared if they miss it once or twice. Like if if you miss a lot, of course, then that's a different story. But if you like miss one or two out of five, don't don't panic. Like keep letting them take penalties. Like the more they take, the better they get at it. Um, yeah. I know, that, but if like, they the only get more chances over five games or six games or hell half the season to take those and they miss them. I mean, is it taking them in practice or is it taking them in the real game experience? There should be no reason that you kick it over. Make the keeper, make the save. I would rather like a Vargas penalty than what we saw uh, this weekend. I know he's going for the top corner, but at the same point, like at least get it on target. Yeah, I think they've been practicing if you really field scared, goals. Hit it hard, to, like straight down the middle, where you know you're yeah, not yeah. going to miss it. Um, yeah, so they've been practicing field yeah, goals. Apparently, they had the wrong goals up during practice. So, but yeah, I mean, three points, right? I mean, we're sitting what seventh in the league. You know, it's not a bad, bad day. And then we got Cincinnati rolling in town. You know, they're top of the league. You know, I think what I forget how many games we've actually one at home on the trot, right? Or undefeated, I guess, would be a better way to put it. It's like 16 or 17, I think, right? Yeah. Somebody in the chat, let us know how many uh, how many games were undefeated in the stadium at the bank. Side so. note, I uh, my friend, because I haven't gotten into the online gambling, because I got enough other things I got to deal with. Oh, I did Can win we- 15 bucks off the game this weekend. Oh, Boom. Man. Now you, you're stealing my thunder, man. Because my oh. boy bet five bucks on it just to win straight up or no, whatever, and he got 15. Yeah, that's what I did. Well, that's the cool thing, I guess, my friends. Yeah, then I got a free $25 or $250 or something to bet. Yeah, free. Yeah, free all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to put it all on England winning the, winning the Euros. <laughs> <laughs> and you could do it, right? You literally yeah. could do that. Yeah, I have to make multiple bets, but yes. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, man, yeah. So, Cincinnati's coming. I didn't read up or study up on them this week, man. Just to, well, just because this week seems, it just seems really short from a home game to, to Tuesday nights. After um, a month off of not having one as well. Yeah. Like, we're now like, oh, two in a week. What the hell yeah. is this about? We That's forgot what this was like. Yeah, right. I agree with Chantry on that because. Oh. Also, we've had so much to like think about from the previous game. I feel like our heads haven't made the shift to the next game yet. We're still like unpacking the previous yeah. game. It, like, there's Which so much the rest were shit then too, man. Oh no! Hey, oh, I got a hot take. 
I got a hot take. Go ahead. Thanks, Dave. My hot take is, so now the regular refs have come off uh, being on strike. Well, shit, man, you can't just go into games and be in a match shape just like that. If they've been, and I'm not kidding. I mean, they literally have to run. They literally have to see things often enough. You want to, you know, ramp up. They, they were not on strike, I guess, before the season. I don't know. But how long is it going to take the MLS refs to get into shape to be as good as they can be? I'm more interested in that there's some new uh, rule tweaks that now roll into place this week that were meant to be started at the start of the season but have been just delayed by the fact that it's been replaced with refs. Like they're now, and what is it, they – they are they're mic'd up over the stadium for VAR decisions to explain it. Um, so that's going to be interesting. I feel like that might go south once or twice. What uh, so, so elaborate on that? It's like we're going to actually hear in the stadium I, I what they're talking about. And someone, someone in the chat could probably say I can't remember whether the, and this was done at the Women's World Cup. Um, whether they you can hear them discussing it wider at the screen or whether when they come off of that they say after reviewing it there was clear contact made therefore i'm going to give a penalty like to, to that extent i think that second one is what it is huh yeah that's that'll be interesting man it's, you know and then what's the other one if a player goes down injured for more than like 15 seconds or something they have to be off the field for a certain amount of time yeah field, yeah so you know, so all those players that enjoy flopping. You know, who's going to start? Is there going to be like somebody sitting there with a stopwatch every time somebody falls oh, down? When's Abada coming in? Abada should be here this weekend. I think he'll be on the bench. I, I'm sorry to segue yeah. so quickly. But like, who's when you said who's going to start? My brain was like, is his green card done? Is no, 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 nobody gonna said who's going to start. Nobody said who's going to start. Well, is he going to be available to play? Yes, he shall be on the field, the pitch, or he should be in the lineup of some capacity uh, Saturday. And should so. be means more than likely. Yeah, it's like when the weatherman says there's like 90% chance of rain. Still might not rain. <laughs> well, no, no, that's, I mean, if you're saying 90% chance he's going to be on the, <laughs> it's definitely on the, the sideline. While we're in the betting world, I, 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 would, I would bet that he's going to be on the bench unless. Like you very rarely see someone come in and do maybe one training session, which it sounds like is what he's going to have, and then yeah. start so soon after. Unless he absolutely like blows the doors off and like it's just an absolute superstar in the training session, which I, like he's he's been traveling a lot. That's unlikely. You're probably going to want him off the bench first time around and then go from there. Yeah, I, I mean exactly. I think uh, Double D had a great game this week. Uh, Pedro, shout out to Pedro, man. He had a great oh, game. Like, in as a left back man i thought he did really well um you know so yeah his um the thoughts are that so he rides for thursday trains with team friday oh yeah it'd be plenty plenty of sh he's i mean it's he should be in game shape it's just a matter of adjusting to the new time zone so and team tactics like he's learning, that too. The other, learning the other players chemistry all that kind of stuff yeah 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 so you know hopefully he shines for us yeah and Going back to the uh, the flopping or whatever, is, this rules for Capetti for sure. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, give him yeah. his due. He is, uh, of the games he's played this season, he has been significantly better with stuff like that um, yeah. and his general attitude around it. Like, obviously, we all want him to see him actually score some goals. Yeah. However, just put that aside for a second, his like general demeanor and attitude has been worlds apart from where he was before. So I, I give him kudos there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So is anybody going to talk about the Diani Pasta trick? Go ahead, Matt. I was just, I was nodding in agreement. It was because yeah. of how, how great a pass it was. Like It was a I, brilliant pass. Yeah. He, yeah. We just need to buy players from League, League Two in France, apparently. Like we just yeah, apparently that's it, yeah. Two. But we good guys, sometimes easy. Patrick's first touch, though, is a little crazy, man. What is League Two in France called? Love Two. Look, yeah. No, no, no. I'm just like everyone, you know, as as a native North Carolinian, still trying to figure out this whole international soccer world. I I never even knew what La Liga was, and probably until two years ago, 
and these other leagues, wherever in Spain and blah, blah, blah. And the, my favorite one to say, Bundesliga. I love I love that Germanic Bundesliga, but hey, whatever. Yeah. So in so France, it, what is the top? What is the top France league called? League League. Uh. league uh. <laughs> uh. Are you serious? Uh. Yeah. Like, like uh. okay. So then it would be so it's however league. you pronounce league in French. As and then yeah, the I, and I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering it, and any French people listening will probably comment that I'm you absolutely know, French it. people listening. How do you know, man? Oh. You don't know that. Some people hide behind the ske- scenes, hey, man. Hey, 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 croissant. Croissant. French <laughs> dressing. Yeah, French but no, it's League fry. Two or League, but however you pronounce it in French. We should, um, we should consult Top Ben. He spends all his time in anomalies these days, so he probably yeah, knows right. the French, French pronunciation. No, 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 not all his time. He just summers there. <laughs> I don't know, man. Make him say, oh, <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Anyways, so uh, somebody is asking, what is the giveaway? So we're going to give away the clear fanny pack with the patch in it. So, uh, bum, bum bag hat. in English. Yeah. Slow What's that? Bum down. bag in English. Bum bag. Yeah. Well, people are commenting on the word like fanny it. in English or England. Bum bag. It says a fanny pack. It's called a bum bag. It's funny that they're coming back in style. Because if if your parent, I mean, whatever, 80s, 90s, if you're wearing a fanny pack, super dork, super whatever, and now it's all flipping around, it's like, hey, we can wear these. It's like bucket hats. Oh, well, is it? Tell me. I didn't know. What's the history? We are doing it single-handedly. I want yeah, it. I and want it. we did it for so long, man, that the club is actually going to be giving them away one night. Kind of curious to see which one it is. If I don't get a bucket hat that night, I'm going to be pissed. I mean, Hold that's on, the only giving, real oh, giveaway I really want. They're giving bu- bucket hats away one night? Yeah. Oh, shit. Hey, Woody. Hey, Joe. We need some of them bucket hats, man. We done brought the game to it. Yeah, man, I like the bucket hats, man. So, anyways, <laughs> just over here staring at my bucket hat, admiring the work. You know, I, I, you know, a secret about this hat, I have never washed it. Like this thing has had beer poured over it, drinks poured over it, everything poured over it, man. You it sweat. First, you just bring it out and, and yeah, like I think it's just stuck in like that way, just because it dried that way over the weekend or whatever. Oh. <laughs> Is it like rock hard? You can like bash it against the Yeah, table. I mean, it's it's kind of crusty for sure, but I'm scared to wash it because I don't want the fan TV part to come off of it. Hey, hey, hey. It doesn't matter if you wash it off or not. We will always be here. That's for right. The fans, by the fans and Lee. All you got to do is put it on Tuesday night and stretch it over your headphones like you're doing now, and then you wear it. It's been stretched out on Saturdays. And then it gets tight again after it dries off with all your salty sweat in it. And then you stretch it back out. It's the cycle, man. Yeah, oh, that's right. I, I said, this is a brilliant idea. I should hand wash it. Why didn't I not think of that? Because of convenience of throwing it in a damn washing machine? That's why. Anyways, yes. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. And be sure to take all your pins off. <laughs> Disgusting. What do you mean? That's what I, you I, show. What? <laughs> Disgusting. The pins, man. You got all these yeah. great pins on there. No, put them close to the camera so we can see them. And I don't I think know it, you can do it. Yes, man. It, They're cool. I've only got the one little Hoodens pin. Yeah, I got your Modelo, well, you know, I see plenty Valgaia. of fans wearing plenty of stuff. And this is Mint for the South fans. South fans. Be, where's fans. my Mint City one? So I'm damn sure some fans want to see that stuff, man. Yeah, sure. Where else are you going to get content city. like this? Yeah, <laughs> you should start doing like pin trading at like tailgates, like a. No, what I've been trying to do, like you when I go it. to a different game or something, or like a oh. new stadium, I pick one up there. So, like for instance, where's the Cincinnati one? Right, there's Cincinnati on here. Yeah, this is Cincinnati. You're taking that off for to next game, right? You're not wearing you it on your head. It, what do you mean? Cincinnati is good. No, I, th- I think it's a Reds pin, not an actual Cincinnati. Oh. Uh, or FC Cincinnati. 
Oh yeah, don't wear that. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah. Yeah, there should be a pin trade. That is. Big. Oh man, that once it goes on the hat, it, that's it. There is no trading. I'll oh, trade whatever. anything but the pins, man. Okay, hold on. Hold on. In general, let me do this. Hold on, Lee, Lee, Lee. Look, <laughs> look at the hand. Look at the hand. Chantry, I'm just talking to you right now. What I'm trying to say is. There should be a whole pin trade. That's a fun stuff. People do it all over the place. It's so easy to make them now. We yeah. need to do that. Yeah. There is. Oh, I don't have a Spurs. Oh, yeah, there is. Here. Uh-huh. In your face, Kyle. See that? Spurs in England. Boom. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on, man. Um, this week's game. I, what do you think about the um, – the, definitely not the other Queen City, that's for sure. Um, same starting lineup. Um, I, I think you've got to bring in Urinen back. Um, yeah, not that Jao Pedro didn't have a, a decent game, I think he did, but just Urinen hadn't done anything wrong over the course of the season. No. He'd been he'd been solid. Um, so I think you've got to bring him back into the team just for that consistency. Um, I think you've probably, I know that there's the R field question of, of how injured is he. I think he's probably okay, but I, I'm not sure. I would lean to going back to Tavares and Vargas, at, um, a winger, um, for a couple of reasons. Um, but one of them is that, and um, this is my like mild hot take, I guess, of the day, that like, mild take, lukewarm take, <laughs> is that, I am really concerned about uh, Brecht, not just the miss. The miss was obviously horrible, and I know that's like the headline of, of him this season. I, I'm just struggling to see what he's adding to the team at this point, and he's 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 probably my biggest concern in the team uh, this season today. Um, I, he's just not provided really anything, um, I, I, and that can position. And then, well, that miss just kind of put the. Uh... Icing on the cake, didn't it? Yeah. I mean, so I really don't, I don't know what to do about that position at the same time, though, because the only players that can play in that position are probably him, um, Arfield, and Bender. Bender's injured, so that's that's out and not even deba worth debating right now. And Arfield, I like him, but I think he's a sub rather than a starter. So I think we're kind of backed into Brett being the starter, but because we don't have a choice, mm -hmm. which isn't great either. Yeah, I mean, Kyle kind of calls it out, right? I mean, everything does run through Acosta, so if we can kind of just shut him down, you know, clog that midfield, right? It, that definitely will help. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, again, I mean, going back to this weekend, man, we didn't have any DPs on there. And, I, you know, besides the bullshit with the refs, man, you know, I, I still think we've played pretty good this season. I mean, there, there's one or two moments where you're like, God almighty, what the hell? I could have done better than that, right? Penalty being one of them trying to score that goal this weekend, you know, but I mean, to be fair, I guess that goal was going to be called back anyways. Right. Um, um, no, the foul happened after that. If he, if he had tapped it, did in, it, it happen or did it happen before that? The, the foul that was, was when he got the cross uh, over and the ball came back out and Patrick got it and then laid it off to Kerwin. But then after he laid it off was when he made contact with, um, uh, uh, the crew player, I forget the name, um, and then Cohen knocked it in after that, uh, right after that touch by Patrick. So if well, Brecht is, I'm 99.9% I'm .9 sure that's what the foul was called for. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, I thought it was on the keeper, right, when the keeper came out. But yeah, okay, so you're right, Matt. I don't know, um, what was that, like in the 63rd minute? Yeah, oh, God, all that injury <laughs> time rolls into one. Who knows? Time is a flat circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I mean... You know, when, when Westwood scored that goal, man, you could just feel the sort of relief, you know, at least where I was standing. And you, dude, I, I think dude. you could see it in the demeanor of the players. So I got it. What's that? What's that? Because I was just going through my notes while you're all were talking. And Westwood goal, if you look at it from, from the YouTube video, someone throws a beer big time. And it's not from the supporter section. When he scores that goal, and everyone was so anticipated for it, and I don't know who was down wherever, but it's like lower bowl, not anywhere near. And you see this huge amount of liquid come out the bottom left. 
Yeah, a lot of people do waste beers. We're like, we should get a beer refund, right? If we throw the beer in the air, right, and the goal doesn't count, we should all get like a beer token, you know? Just saying. Just throwing it out there, Shard FC, if you're watching. That was the, the Westwood goal was like, that was one of the classic, like, fans, like, sucking into the net type goals. Where yeah. What a great so composure and technique that was. Did he win the goal of the week? Have they decided that yet? I think it's a two-day vote. Yeah, they, they do, but he'll win. He was up by a fair amount. He's probably gonna win. Oi, oi, oi! Number seven, Ashley, goal of the week. Y'all can still get out there. I'm sure you got an email from the club. Vote for him for the Adam goal of the week. If there's nothing else that Charlotte FC great at is winning the goal of the week award, yeah, on either MSC. for or against. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, oh, that's funny, right? In the in this, I, I like this day. In the vault, they have butlers to throw the beer for you. Throw Go through my up. beer. Go through my beer. Yes, be gone with you. You know, scholars, and you can have the beer scholars. thrown on you experience, and there's like a trough. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> and whatever. Do yeah. you want the whole beer thrown yeah, at you? you just you want, want yeah, beer like beer how you, how much are you wanting this to do? So <laughs> either you can throw the beer or you can have the beer thrown on you. Or you can yeah, you know, yes, fanny pack. To enter giveaway, yes. Hey, some people to call in. Y'all call in, man. Oh yeah, somebody Bring call in. in. I forgot about that. Yeah, but yeah. You're paying like twenty five bucks, literally to yeah. have it open for an hour. Somebody yeah. call in. Somebody call in. Somebody hey, call in and talk shit to us about did, the first half or something. Did any of y'all see the uh, the Charlotte Observer? They did a whole piece on the women. Yeah, that guy was walking around. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, but did, did, you, did you see it? The picture they took of all 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 the supporter group women and other great fans in front of the mural at McNich was so beautiful. And it was really a great article. And I wish there was a little more talked about it, but I just wanted to bring that up for sure. That uh, uh, Las Mujeres in uh, our community, so good, so great. Yeah, that was it. Was a really good article. I read this. I read it as well. And uh, every single one of the, uh, the the ladies in in that photo, the the capos and the presidents, vice presidents. Yes. Called, Awesome people as well. Every single one of them. Yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think we got a good fan base. And that intro, man. That intro to the stadium. I think we got to have one of the best like intro start of a game, man. Is that the first time some dude walked out there with a flame in his hand, though? He did it the first game, but I oh, feel like it was, it, there was more focus on it this time around somehow. Yeah, it's like they're building up a story of some sort, man. I don't know. I, I do know. want to see him light something. Someone else said this today. He needs to light something with it, I feel like, rather than just walk out with it. Yeah, like actually, yeah, if they can make some sort of big boom with fireworks at the same time, it lights up or something. Maybe have Latanzio out there. Let's set Latanzio on fire. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> like, yeah, no, no, we do not yeah, agree with that. That, that was all on Matt. That was all on Matt. Yeah. Matt that's, that's Matt right there. His, you can him. find him. Yeah, at uh, some, yeah, no. If you've got, yeah, Matt. No, if Latanzio ends up on fire, that's I, I was like, hey, Latanzio. I'm not talking about burning anyone in effigy, and Matt's like, uh, no, I'm talking about burning for real. Damn, yeah. Matt. That's hardcore. Yeah. Jeez, right? man. He's still pissed about his son saying Tottenham's better than Fulham. Yes. So. Yes, <laughs> I did. I went to the transcript, and technically, what's your son's name, Matt? William. William said Tottenham <laughs> is better than Fulham. He did not say Tottenham. So I'm sure uh, there's like a a five level, maybe yeah. underneath the ground, some troglodyte level of soccer, and that's Tottenham. <laughs> no, no, I got him. Matt let, Matt set him free, and I snuck over there and got him real quick. He's a great kid. I didn't kid. even hear when he said that. I'll be honest with you. I could not because there was like noise going on around. I couldn't hear yeah, yeah. When, when that was said. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. But yeah, so Cincinnati game. What do we think? What do we score predictions? Oh, that's a valid question. Is I would, uh, I would love being Sir Minty now? No, he's not. I mean, we lost uh, the OG Sir Minty, right? He left. He's in Serbia. Yeah. But yeah, score predictions for this weekend. What do you think? 
Go ahead, Matt. Really hard one to predict again for a few reasons. One, I can't really base anything off the last game because of how batshit crazy it was. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, we're clearly we've clearly got something good going at home at this point. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. Before you the- before you t- say drop the score, we're gonna listen to um, Dino talk about home games real quick. Well, I said that we've got to make this a real tough place to come like we did today. You know, um, the Columbus crew are the MLS holders. Uh, they were unbeaten this season. And I think we've just drawn a line in the sand what we can do here. But, you know, I don't want to just do it here at this stadium. I want to do it on the road as well. You can see at the end how well connected they are. I mean, the, these fans are integral to what we do. Um, you know, not just the supporters, but the community as well. It's a community club. We're only young uh, as a club, but I think we're still growing. Our fan base is, is tremendous, and I think he's probably one of the envies of the league as well. And we want to continue growing up. Preach it, man. Those home Indies games. Envies of the league. Those Indies home games of the league. Are, are definitely, uh, we're definitely the 12th man, if there's such a thing, right? So go ahead, Matt. You were saying before I rudely cut you off. Ooh. Yeah, I was going to say, we definitely got a good thing going at home. Um, uh, we definitely also have, a, a, to what Dino was saying, a better connection, I feel like, between players and uh, uh, the fans this year than we did last year. A little bit because Dino is clearly more fan and media friendly than Latanzia was um, by a large margin. Um, but also you see them just like engaging with fans, I feel like, when it uh, at the end of games a lot more than they did before, which is really good to see. But going back to the original question... Um, my head says one one. My heart says two one. Charlotte. Yeah, but so I mean to that point, right? Everybody was when I was just at the tailgate or whatnot was asking me what I thought about who was gonna what the score is gonna be against Columbus, and I honestly couldn't think of like who would score for us. I mean, you know, Westy pulled one out and then Patrick did, but I wasn't I wasn't expecting I was expecting like a nil nil or something, right? Just. Uh, Something along these lines, but are we saying Capetti comes back this week? I'm no, sorry, that's, that's, I read a, a thing about NC State. I'm sorry. That's a two part question Is he available to come back this week? And should he come back this week? And if he's available and, sh- and can come back, will he be up to speed? Will it be worth it to have him on the pitch for X amount of time? To get up to speed. Uh, who knows, man? Who knows? I'm going to say oh, we're playing FC Cincinnati, man, and they're, they're Patrick's just warming up. It's I don't know, man. JT, who do you think is going to win? Or what do you think the score is going to be? Well, last week, because I was doing like reverse psychology, you can go back to the tape, I said Columbus was going to win 3-0. So, to keep, and I knocked on wood after doing it. To keep that up, I'm going to say that Cincinnati's going to win 2 0. Man, this is such a hard thing to predict. Um, I'm going to go out on the limb and just say another 1 1. I think it's going to be 1 1. Bank? The bank's yep. our place, man. If like, someone had offered me four it, points from those two games a, a, a week ago, we would have bitten their arm off. Man, we got a tough. We've had a tough schedule. Who got after Cincinnati, man? Is it? It's not Minnesota, is it? New England. Oh, we should beat those guys. Let me pull up the schedule. I should probably have this at the beginning of each game. I mean, yeah, each show. for the fans, by the fans, authenticity. Yeah, we play New England, so we, that should be it. Well, looking where they're sitting now, that should be uh, an easy one. But I don't know, man. I don't know. To, to be, you understand. I actually think y'all should both appreciate this. What's since that? You're, since you're English folks, not just British folks, is and also Americans now, is we're both Cincinnati and Charlotte Queen Cities. Oh, now, look at that. they're not the Queen City, though. They're imposters. Oi, oi, oi. Just hold on. Let me finish my question, boys, lads. We are the OG Queen City, right? 
And also, our Queen City is named after a queen in Cincinnati. I ain't never heard of Queen Cincinnati. That's all I'm saying. So please help me understand this Queen City whatever. How are we going to help you understand it? I mean, they're just not the real Queen City, man. Yeah, well, isn't, the, isn't the Queen City a thing that's like given to the second, or oh, sorry, the biggest city in, in a state that's not the state capital or something? It's like a thing in the U.S. And that's why Cincinnati is allegedly called one. I don't know. Isn't there a Queen City in Baltimore, too? I, and thoughts and prayers, shout out to the Baltimore family for what happened today. But anyways. But no, I don't. I have no idea. They're not the real Queen City. We're the real no. Queen City. We're Queen Charlotte, man. We've got a statue oh, from the Queen, you. man, with the Queen. And Mecklenburg is based on royalty as well, which yep. is the county. So, uh, yeah, home. man. And then we... Nations everywhere. Yeah. If, if you go get some of that Cincinnati, uh, whatever they call it, spaghetti stuff, it's nothing but the spaghetti noodles and everything, you got to pay in pounds, dog. So you've you segued me nicely into one thing I did want to mention. And that is there's going to be a chili cook-off at the tailgate this weekend, um, which um, uh, people are welcome to, 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 to do some tastes, taste testing of while it's going on there. Um, no, no skyline chili allowed because that is not real, chi- uh, real chili. Skyline chili? Yeah. That's, that's what Cincinnati is known for. Oh, see? It's didn't trash. even know. Don't, don't, honestly, don't really care. Don't care about Cincy. Whatever they want to be so called. We're the Queen City. Let's we'll wrap it up. We're yeah, we are the and if, Queen if City. Two, two English dudes are telling us we're the Queen City. It's legit. Okay. okay. So we're good there. Figured it out. Wrap it up. All right, number four. Number four. No, we already did that. Ref's back. We'll pick one. Pick something. Uh, any updates on Bronico? Have we heard anything about Bronico? No, I haven't heard much about Bronico, Bender, Cambridge. I any know. of those guys really. You know, that's what's really I weird, know. though, about MLS. Right? They don't, like, at least in Europe, they seem to update you more on, like, injuries and, like, you know, what's wrong, how long they're going to be out for. But you don't really hear any of that from the MLS. Is it just me not reading it somewhere, or they just don't do it? No, they don't. Yeah, it would be nice to have like an injury like, update. It's not – other U.S. sports are much clearer about that kind of stuff. Like, it's, it's ML, MLS is the only one. Yeah. Like I mean, that. Willie I P either. does a good job on his socials trying to, like, put that stuff out about the injuries, but I, I honestly don't hear anything. Yeah. I mean, and us having the interview with Bronico – whatever a month ago about now, we assume that we would, maybe you don't hear it, whatever. I would love to see, we want the best team on the pitch no matter what. However, it'd be great to see some of the people that a lot of fans and the ladies, whoever else, fell in love with because they're that good. But at the very least, Bronico back on. I mean, he's like our, our poster guy. Mid pitch, he's got that fire in his belly. I just, I'd love to see him, but if he's not ready, he's not ready. I don't, I don't think they're holding him back. I'm just saying, we miss Bender, Ben Bender. We miss Lindsay, and we miss Bronico. Yeah, so I, it's just, it's just odd to me. Like, you know, they don't even give you like, even when they do get hurt and they kind of figure out what's wrong, they don't say like, oh, you know, around six weeks, they just say, you know, well. We're looking into that. So I don't know. Anyways. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't, maybe. I just don't know. Anyways. And then, yeah, Bronico may have lost his spot to double D for sure, man. Yeah. He's been, once again, he's been excellent. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he was, he was, he played really well. That's a, that's a good pickup. And I could see Melanda, if he keeps playing the way he plays when he does play well, minus the Nashville game, I think, you know, He's probably he's gonna have some teams sniffing around from Europe somewhere else. That's for sure. Can, you know, one thing I would like to discuss to bring up is: can we talk about quickly the uh, MLS power rankings? Both the ESPN one and the MLS power rankings. Yeah, go for how it. Stupid they are. Um, I don't. I think we're like eighteen stupid, in man. one and like sixteen in the other, or something, something like yeah. that. Like, I'm like, but in both of them have Columbus Crew at number one. Like, sure, 
there was some weird stuff happening with the ref, referee, etc. But we've been decent this season. Like I'm We're not, not saying bad, we're like a top five team or anything like that. Like I'm I'm not going that far. But like 16 or 18 or wherever we are, it's just is is crazy. We've played more away games than we have home games. There's there's stats that show up that we've got the second best um expected goal differential in the Eastern Conference behind DC, funny enough. Um, yeah. Sure, we've got a lot we need to improve on, but being ranked that low is baffling. I That's right. Let it. them forget us, man. Let them, I, I, power rankings are just that, right? They're just somebody sat there. And then I read I something today that. about the power rankings. It was like, oh, just the take. It just it seemed to me that uh, it was lazy journal, journalism. It's content for content's sake. Which is lazy journalism. Yeah, fair. And and at the same time, yeah, sure, say it now, whatever. But we, I do like, I guess to your point, Matt, is that Hold on, we, we, got ran, a call, we ran we ran the gauntlet early, going the farther away trips. We played the harder teams. We came back. We now are playing the hardest teams, and we hold our 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 our, our whatever our scores being who we are at the bank and we got to continue going now with Cincinnati, but we hold it down at the bank. Yeah. Yeah. We've and also had in there, we've got a game in hand against, um, on Miami. If we win that game in hand, we'll be one point behind Miami who everyone loves. No, that's, you know. that's, well, that's the reason we won. So that way we could rig the league for Miami apparently. Right. Oh, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So well, Edward, you're on the line, man. What you got to say? Did he hang up? <laughs> hey, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. No, I'm still here. I'm just, I'm just waiting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, I just wanted to ask what everybody thought of uh, Sir Minty's new pants. That's about it. Sir Minty got new pants. What? Yeah, I, I didn't. Hey, I, saw, I, I saw Sir Minty. You got a fresh new kit. No, I, I haven't seen All Sir right. Minty. Well, what's the difference of the pants? I mean, he had black pants on before. Yeah, he's well, cool. he's on their socials. After the win, he came out. He got new. He got new pants. Well, what do they look like oh, yeah. besides being black? Well, maybe had a little st- sparkle to him or something. I know. What do they look like, Patrick? Edward. Or Edward. Uh, you still there? Is he dropped? No, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm still here. Okay. Oh, nice. Hey, before, what do they look before... like? describe the pants. We don't have a picture of them now. What does Minty's new kit look like? I don't know. Bad signal, probably. Anyways, I have no idea, I'm, man. I'm trying to bring it up. I can't, I can't find it. Anyways. Picture. He was yeah. looking pretty mangy last year. Like, his, like the ball was stretched out at the top. His like, face man, was pretty Minty, dirty. I, I won the bet oh. with Sir Minty. You go the longest without washing that gear, man. I think yeah. I won. No, we we need to give extra points to Chantry for the most apt word. He was looking mangy, because truly, like like a dog, like <laughs> people definitely, he was looking mangy, like he, and that's true. Like living living in the wild for a few weeks or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so if you're new to the show, man, hit that sub button. Uh, are you regular OGs, man? You know what to do. Hit the like, share, blah 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 blah. All that fun stuff. Um. Hashtag fanny pack if you want to uh win a fanny pack or a fanny pack, yeah. You so you get a, a, with, with the patch and uh bum bump bump the pack bum, bum pack and, and the bum bag. Bum bag, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. So uh yeah, so um let's go through some of these comments I starred uh about it this week. No, I mean yes, possibly. Uh, if anything, on the bench, in my opinion, um, we should physically see him. But I, it'll be interesting if he. I doubt he'll be on the pitch. Oh, this is interesting. Teddy posted this earlier, and I wanted to save it. Uh, every former short FC player who returned to play against the club has been red carded, counting on yeah Rios to keep the streak alive. So that's an I, interesting I, stat. I, I guess maybe I want that to happen. I don't know. Yeah. So, um, the cards are not good for health. For the most yeah. Part. Uh, I'm just trying to catch, catch up on this. I think it's the bucket hat over your, your, 
ear earphones. Hey, we got to do the uh, the best fan of the match. Oh, yes. We'll do the giveaway. Yeah, and also catch the song at the end of this because I would love to start making this a thing in the stadium, by the way. So I'm going to start pushing this uh, and, and every week. I think it's number 15 on my list because I would like to make a song. And whoever figured it out and y'all got it together, organic, yes. After this, what well, we're about to play this clip with this beautiful thing, fan, the best fan of the week, as in who we interview outside the gate, after every game, gate, uh, East Gate, the best fan, uh, we'll put it up there, and it's being sponsored by that, so go ahead and play it. Yes. This is an honor. I thought before this game that I really needed Westwood to step up and be a leader in the final third. He has proved himself tonight, and I just want to say I want this momentum to continue, and I love Charlotte FC. Good night. Does that mean you're going to be here next week? I'll be here next week. We go Westwood! FC Westwood! I just don't think you understand! He comes from Pine he takes the bucket's head. We got Ashley Westwood! Yeah, man, I would love to uh, get that song going, man. Matt, you've you've got some clout in regards to oh, getting I some know. chance I going. Well, anymore. you know, I, right? I just screw around these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you've well, been a part of bringing I think some of the chance to the came up with that uh, in the first what's, place. What's that? Was it Matt Matt B that came up with that in the first place? I'm not sure who came up with it, but man, I, I like we tried to sing it do it in the stands, but the drums kind of outdo us. So, but like it would be cool if we could. I know, like, the Mint City boys stand over there to the right of where I normally hang out. So if we could get those guys on and, you know, we can start it in the middle and just kind of get it going get loud that. enough. We got to get the uh, Dino, Dino, Dino. Yeah, Dino and, is easy. Um, uh, the Kalina Tequila, which yeah, I was yeah. hoping to get going, but he, he didn't have a save to make, so we didn't really have a chance to do it this weekend. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I would love to get that Ashley Westwood song going, man, because uh, he drinks all the fucking tea. That's right. So. Uh, I also like just y'all bringing the tune of it. Da, you know, we got Westwood. You know, the tune? you know what song is based on, JT? No, I do not. Achy Breaky Heart. With my Achy Break. So you're yes, telling me, no, like, in, like in the late 90s, Achy Breaky Heart, uh, uh, Billy Ray Cyrus, Achy Breaky Heart was popular enough all around the world that it came over to England. And in the English Premier League, certain places picked it up and did their cheers for their teams to Achy Breaky Heart. And now, 35 years later, it's still going, and we're still doing Achy Breaky Heart. Circle of life. But it said it's big at Westwood. Huh? Are you serious? Is that really what's happening? I mean, it came from Achy Breaky Heart originally? Yeah. Well, shit, man, that's like stuff like I would love to know. I just told you. I, I know, but fans like us who are just getting into it. And it's like, you know, we're not going to walk up to you and be like, yo, man, you know I what, know man? This that. is song I, I was just like singing about Ashley Westwood, and it was like this achy, breaky heart hey, thing. Hey, Lee, Lee, yeah. I'm not talking to you right now, dog. I was just trying to explain why we haven't come and told you about the achy, breaky heart song. Whatever, it's fine. <laughs> All right, folks. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. Fuck it. Hashtag. <laughs> hashtag is something very different. Yeah. <laughs> That's behind the monitor. Um. Anyways, hashtag Fanny Pack. If you would like air. to enter the draw, and I'll give you like sixty seconds, and I'm gonna hit the draw button here. But. <laughs> yes, and it comes with a nice little um. We'll throw it in the patch too. So if you missed it, and it's transparent, so you can't sneak smoke bombs into the stadium. Yeah. Well, Literally. if you put some, maybe like some Kleenex in front of it, and then have it up against you, you could probably hide some stuff. Because then I think it'd just be Kleenexes. Anyways, Lee is not speaking for us or CLTFC Fan TV. He's not <laughs> for the fans or by the fans. Damn it! 
when it comes to sneaking in smoke bombs. That's right. All right. I'm going to hit the straw button, man. I'm going to hit the straw button. Don't forget to hit the sub button. Greg. Oh. Isn't Greg like in Hungary or something? I think I saw him on Facebook posting some pictures from like Bulgaria or some shit. Maybe it's. He's, he's been banned from point. Facebook. Oh, uh, the, the fan zone anyway. Has he? I think so. What are y'all doing on Facebook, man? It's such a toxic. <laughs> <laughs> it's so toxic. Anyways, folks, we appreciate you tuning in, man. Uh, we dropped the uh, fan interviews this week. on it. They're up on YouTube now. So if you haven't seen them, go check those out. Um, as always, you can come find us outside the supporters gate right after the game. And we'll interview you. You can say whatever you like. Um, completely unedited and we'll get posted. So um, be careful uh, what you say, uh, especially some folks out there that, you know, don't want their moms to see it. And uh at CLTFC Fan TV for all the socials for us. And uh, Matt, where can people find you? Um, I'll go with my alter ego at Westwood T Gang on uh, Twitter and Instagram. All right. And Greg, man, reach out to me on whatever social you want and we'll f- work out a plan to get this to you. And Mint City Matthew, let me know when you're coming to a game so I can give you this uh, the other uh, patch that we have. JT, anything you want to say, man, before we uh, head out? Let's go. Let's go. For the fans, by the fans, damn it.